What's up, spectators? Welcome back. Let's play Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, the second official Layton game to come out back in 2009 for North America anyways. It's actually called Pandora's Box in Europe, which is a much better name. Pandora's Box versus Diabolical Box. I don't know. Ah, whatever. Anyways. Let's see which save files this... Oh, hold on. Actually, go back. Can I go back? No? Can't do that? Okay. I did want to see the other save files, but I guess I can do that later. There are tales of a box that brings death upon any who dare open it. Tell me, do you think those rumors could be true? That is pretty diabolical. There it is! There's all those glorious mustaches. Everywhere mustaches. That job could be automated. All those guys are gonna lose their jobs. Yep, that's appropriate. Now this is what I call deluxe. Just look at this room. Yes, I can certainly see why some call the Molin Teddy Express a cruise ship on rails. Ha <laughs> ha This sofa's great! <laughs> now don't forget, Luke. A gentleman pays attention to his manners. In every setting. This whole thing is going to take place on this train. I bet you. Of course, they can very easily prove me wrong right here, right now. By just... Um, uh, not landing, but... So what's the actual story behind the Elysian box anyway? All who open it die, huh? Hmm, sounds awfully fishy to me. Perhaps so, but we've seen it happen with our very own eyes. The answer is out there, Luke, but I just need to find it. We will. I know it. The truth is out there, Scully. To my dear friend, Carolyn. There was a box that was rumored to kill anyone who opened it. At first, neither the professor nor I believed it. But all that changed with the arrival of a single letter. A few days earlier. Look, have a look here. Oh, what's that, professor? It's a letter from my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Andrew Schrader. Is everything all right? My dear Herschel, knowing you, I imagine you've already heard of the relic known as the Elysian Box. This strange antique is infamous for killing anyone who opens it. Truth be told, I'm a bit dubious of the box's murderous reputation. But you know how I am. Once something piques my interest, I simply must get to the bottom of it. That's why I'm pleased as punch to tell you that the elusive item is finally in my possession. What's more, I believe I'm on the cusp of unraveling a great mystery tied to this box. For the moment, let's just say I have a theory though I haven't been able to prove it yet. Initially, it was my intention to finish my research before daring to open its lid. But I must confess that my curiosity is simply overpowering. In the unlikely event that anything should happen to me, please, finish the work I've started here. Your friend, Andrew Schrader. 
In case I die, please According to do my job doctor, for me. Drop everything you're doing. Two days ago. We should go pay the doctor a visit. I just can't shake the feeling that something awful has happened. Well, your intuition's usually spot on. I say we head out right away. Elysian Box. The Elysian Box is an antique said to bring death upon any who dare open its lid, according to rumors. A box has already claimed many lives and is feared in many parts of the world. Could this strange item truly exist? Luke, before we go, would you be so kind as to fetch my car keys? They're in one of the drawers in that desk. No doubt with a puzzle. If there's something you wish to inspect, Luke, simply give it a tap. Good luck, Luke. I believe y I believe in you. Whew, that was tough. Many thanks, Luke. Now let's get moving. You do know how to move about, don't you, Luke? <laughs> you know how to move your legs, don't you? Yes, you tap things. That's exactly right. Anytime you want to move, start by giving the shoe icon a tap. Hold on a second. That's the way! One can't investigate properly without first doing a little legwork, as they say. I couldn't agree more, Professor. Now, shall we head off? Head to Dr. Schrader's home. It'd be wise of us to confirm the location of the doctor's flat. During one of his visits some time ago, he was kind enough to leave me a map to his home. The map, as you can see, is a rather unusual piece of cartography. Look here, Luke. How clever! The map itself is a puzzle! Do you mind if I take a crack at it? I just know I can solve this one. In the map to Dr. Schrader's home, several pieces in the center have been cut out. Restore the map by inserting the missing pieces in the correct spots. Touch a piece with your stylus to grab it, then slide your stylus to move the selected piece across the screen. You can't rotate the pieces. Hmm. Okay. Let's see here. Wrong. Now he said you can't rotate, correct? Yes. So that- that's a potential. That has potential. Nope, actually that does- oh! The centerpiece can be moved, which does change things. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That doesn't quite fit. That does. That does not. This does. Okay. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. Excellent work. Now hop to it. Excellent. With our destination confirmed, we're ready to pay the doctor a visit. Come now. I do believe we found the doctor's building. But which flat is his? That I'm afraid I don't know. But thinking on it now, the letter I received did mention something about this place. Okay, in the morning I often awaken to the sound of music drifting in from a nearby flat. Looking out I spy a flag fluttering gently outside my window. Take a single sip of my tea and turn my attention to the morning sun. Not many flats in London have a view of the sunrise anymore, you know. Okay... So, let's see here. There are three flags. So it could either be... Let's see. Either be this one... I suppose it could be one of these as well. And... This one. Let's see here. Oh no, actually. Hold on. 
I spy a flag fluttering gently outside my window. So would would this upper one on the top left count? Because the flag is above. I think it might still count. It's probably this one. Probably. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Now that you know where it is, head for the doctor's home. Unless I'm mistaken, I think we found the right flat. Follow me, Luke. Oh, I nearly forgot. Before we leave, let's review how to use this trunk. To open the trunk, just tap the icon in the upper right corner of the screen. Inside, there's all sorts of helpful information filed away under different icons. Touch an icon to use it. And to save the progress we've made during our investigation, just tap the icon to mark save. This icon is the puzzle index. Tap it to view all puzzles we've encountered thus far. Solve puzzles with mark with a check, and those we've yet to finish are blank. Puzzles we've already finished can be replayed by selecting them from this screen. Also, the index shows the locations of unsolved puzzles we've tried so that we may revisit them. Tap the journal icon to display my personal notes of the key story events. Now that we got that out of the way. So whenever you need to access the trunk, just give it a tap. What you want? Hello there, mister. Never seen you around here before. Want to hear something useful? Check it out. See that mailbox right over there? Try tapping on it. Brilliant! That's a hint coin you found there. Ever work a puzzle and get stuck? It's times like that when I bet you'd fancy a hint, yeah? Well, when that happens, you can trade in those shiny hint coins for hints. They're scattered all over the place, which means you should always be on the lookout for them. Well, that's all I had to say. You take it easy, mister. Looking for some hit coins here. And there are none. This is Dr. Schrader's flat, I'm sure of it. Andrew, are you home? It's Herschel Layton. Are you there, Doctor? I don't hear anyone in there, Professor. What if he's... There's no time for speculation now, Luke. We must get this door open immediately. It seems to be locked from the inside. But without a key, there's no way to get in. Here, use this lockpick. It's for, uh... The door puzzle. Yes, Luke, yes. You do it. I, I don't want to do it. You should do it. Get your fingerprints all over there. In my haste, I forgot about these keys the doctor included in his letter. Oh. Okay, or that. Quick, Professor, let me try them on the door. That's strange. It doesn't seem like any of these keys work on the lock. Luke, don't you see? Dr. Schrader has set before us yet another puzzle to solve. You know, if this if this was time sensitive and he was dying right now, we would have died because of his puzzles. Good job, Schrader. Which key opens the door? As you might expect, the key won't open the door if its shape won't get let it pass through the keyhole. Use your stylus to fit keys to the lock. Examine each key carefully and use your stylus to move in the keys to find the one that fits into the lock. Yes. Do these rotate? They rotate! So it's backwards. Hmm, not quite. If I just and uh, and uh, whatever. I, uh, I knew it'd be something weird. That was almost too easy. That's right. Did you take? Uh, did it take you a while to figure out that the portion of the key resembling the grip was actually the part that fit the keyhole? Answers can often be found in the most unlikely of places. Uh. <sighs> 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 oh. Professor! Yeah. <sighs> no, Andrew. Avenge me! How could this have happened? This is terrible, Professor. Do you suppose the Elysian box did this to Dr. Schrader when he tried to open it? I honestly don't know, Luke. But that can wait. Right now, we need to notify the police. 
Of course, Professor. Hmm? What do we have here? A train ticket for the Molentelli Express. Now this is strange. Look, there's no destination written on this ticket. Have you ever seen a train ticket that didn't say where it was taking you? Yes, very strange indeed. A single ticket with no visible destination was discovered in Dr. Schrader's home. It appears to be for Molentary Express, but where exactly is it supposed to take its owner? To hell! Excuse me. Massage. Well, Inspector Chelmy's the name. You two found the body, did you? What in the blanket? No, Luke. Let him go. Luke, stop that. That's his face. Listen here, Luke. Oh, my gosh. His face doesn't come off. He's the real deal. What in the blazes? That's my face, not some piece of taffy. I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't mean it. I was sure we had another imposter on our hands. What in the world is this child talking about? I swear, young ones these days have no manners. My apologies for the confusion. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Herschel Layton. I'm a professor of archaeology at Gressenheller University. And I'm his apprentice, Luke. Interesting. So if I understand correctly, you keep a child around as an apprentice, do you? Not at all, sir. In truth, he's... Professor Layton's apprentice, like I said. <sighs> well, it's really none of my concern. I have a crime scene that needs my attention. Clear a path, will you? But of course. Luke, not a word about that ticket to the authorities, all right? Ooh, lying to the police? You got it, Professor. I like where this is going. Hmm, yes. Let's see. What do we have here? A murder? Or was the crime self-inflicted? Inspector, I should tell you that the door was locked before Luke and I came in. I see. So this door, the sole entry point in and out of this eighth floor flat, was shut tight. Then the doctor was holed up in here, completely apart from the outside world, yes? That being the case... Hmm, yes, I'm sure of it. The old gent must have suffered a heart attack. What? How did you come to that conclusion, sir? Use your noodle, laddie. What other explanation could there be? Open shut case, Johnson. It's true that the flat is on the eighth floor and that the door was locked, Inspector. Still, I'd hesitate to say that this room was completely closed off from the outside. Is that so? Please elaborate. Isn't it obvious? There's something quite unusual about our crime scene that's been overlooked. Eh? It's as plain as the nose on your face, Inspector. <laughs> I suppose you academics think your fancy degrees prepare you to play detective, eh? I tell you, nowadays, it seems like everybody and their mum thinks they can do my job. Now, as I was saying, the cause of death was heart failure, plain and simple. And there's what caused it. <laughs> Brilliant! This, it's a scaled-down model of a Kronosaurus, if I'm not mistaken. I reckon that ugly mug will give anyone nightmares. Here's what probably happened. The old fellow turned on a light, took one look at the beast, and then keeled right over. But this is the doctor's own home. Why would the bones he put up himself scare him? People have a way of becoming forgetful with age. Not that you'd understand, boy. Right, it's an open shut case. Well, you're right about that. I don't think I understand it at all. Mr. Letton, was it? No? Ah, yes, Leighton. Mr. Leighton, 
What do you think? The scenario you paint certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility. But, considering the lights were off when we entered the room, I don't think we've found our answer yet. Oh, uh, really? Furthermore, look around you, Inspector. Doesn't anything strike you as odd? What do you mean, Professor? Study your surroundings, Luke. I'm sure you can see it, too. I bet it's the window. It's the window. I'm just gonna click the window. With its windows opening out into the air, thin air, eight stories up and its door securely bolted, you might think that this room is inaccessible from the outside. However, a single unusual detail reveals the truth of what went on here. Your job is to look around the room by tapping the arrows and find this detail. Once you've got it, circle the area with your stylus and make choose to submit to give your answer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oops. Mm hmm. Nothing out of the ordinary. Still nothing out in the ordinary. This coffin is rather interesting, but so is this. Torn curtain. Here goes. Got it. <laughs> Piece of cake. Nice eye. For some reason, part of the curtain shown here has been ripped clear off. Of course. This window is missing a curtain. Hmm. So it is. But what exactly does this have to do with my crime scene? It means someone exited the building through this window, and I'll bet he's our culprit. I'd say that's a sound theory. Well done, my boy. Oh, uh, yes. Sound as a pound. I was just about to propose the same idea myself. Liar! Shh, Luke, listen. I don't believe our friend the Inspector will be of much help to us. What say you and I conduct a little investigation of our own? Professor, look! There's something in Dr. Schrader's hand! It's an old photograph, but it's been torn into so many pieces I can't make out the original image. Torn fragments of a photograph were found in the late doctor's hand. In its current state, it's impossible to make out the contents of the photo. What could it be depicting? Hey, what's the big idea? You can't just pour it evidence in a crime scene. Get your hands off that, uh, that... What is this, anyway? Hmm, not that it matters. I'll be holding on to that. Now, out with the both of you! Ah! But we're not done! Hmm, I think this is gonna be a good time to end the video. It's been a little over 23 minutes. And, since we've been kicked out of Dr. Schrader's room, I'm gonna kick you out of the video! So stay tuned for the next one! And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.